Hey guys, what is up? It's me, John the Ears, and I wasn't gonna make a video on this, but uh, I'll make a video on it, I suppose, because I feel like there's still some people out there who haven't heard this story from my past yet, even though I've made several videos on it in the past, and there's still some new people from here who probably aren't, like, entirely new, but might find the story interesting or helpful for their own benefits. So, Anyway, let's get on with the story, shall we? Today we are going to be obviously telling our story. <laughs> so, I will be disguising the names, obviously, for their own protection. But, uh, actually, you know what? Let's use this online alias because I seriously doubt he still uses it. So, here we go. So, some of you who've been with me for a long time and who've been with my channel since the Gary's Mod debut when it was in its Gary's Mod phase. Excuse me there. Are very familiar with a man by the name of Mr. Smoke. For those of you who aren't familiar, this story should help shed some light on Mr. Smoke and exactly why I ended my friendship with him. So, here we go. And even those of you who've been with me and who knew Mr. Smoke, this may help some of you even more with uh, some of the background story and behind the scenes stuff you didn't see that I got to see and I got to go through, as well as Radical got to see and Radical had to go through and also a few other select people that saw it. Anyway, let's get back on track with the story, shall we? So Mr. Smoke and I met on a Gary's Mud server known as Code 3 Gaming and or Play Free RP. Now for those of you who are familiar with Code 3 Gaming, I used to be an admin on Code 3 Gaming. I spent a ballpark estimate of about $800, $900 on Play Free over my time spent there. And I went all the way from Super Admin all the way up to the rank of King and Queen, which was directly beneath Conwa. And obviously I had a Queen at one point, but then I didn't, so it just became King. So, anyway, point being, Mr. Smoke and I met on Play Free RP, and we met when I was still going through my phase of, like, uh, non-professionalism. I was still kind of new to the whole running a community professionally and being a decent human being thing, and I was going through my awkward teenage phases, so bear with me here on that and know that I've improved since this story. Now Mr. Smoke and I used to uh, mess around sort of with uh, different items inside of Gary's Mod, such as the non-copyrighted Batarang um, parody, which was an explosive boomerang essentially. You throw it and it explodes. So we would cloak around the map, we would get invisible, we would turn our invisibility on, on Gary's mod on the server, and we'd fly around the map and explode people with boomerangs. And we would explode the entire server with boomerangs. Why did we do this? I don't know, but it just kind of happened. Now, Bear with me here, because this, I, I keep saying bear with me, but this, this will be the last thing I say on bear with me, but this is going to be a really long story. This video is already four minutes long, and I haven't even touched the base of the story, so if you guys like long videos, go ahead and continue the rest of the video, but if you don't like long videos, I would skip towards the end of the video for the explanation as to why. I decided to end my friendship with him, or closer to the end of the video. I'll leave a timestamp down in the description below. But, um, anyways, Mr. Smoke 
was kind of, I don't want to say mental necessarily, but that's honestly the best way to put it. He wasn't exactly like Joker level crazy, but kind of like that r slash nice guy slash r slash I'm quirky slash uh, basically he was the epitome of every r slash nice guy ever mixed into one person. And I'll get more into why I say that later in the story. But uh, we were messing around with the, bat, the, 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 the boomerangs, the explosive boomerangs on the map and we were spotting people and we got caught and Connell was just like, well, just don't do it when there's a lot of people on because you don't want to ruin the player base. So only mess around when there's like eight or nine people on and then any more than that and don't mess around. So. And so we kind of got along and we messed around for a little bit and da 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 da. Eventually, I bought a class, which was a upgraded version of a class that he had bought, but it was upgraded, and I gave him access because he was the original creator of the original class. So what it was was pro. It was basically pro Joker. So he had the Joker, and then I had pro Joker, which was uh, it had like a minigun. And it had like 10,000 health and 10,000 armor points. I know that's a little excessive, but at the time I had money to throw around and I was just like, fuck it, why not? And I didn't understand the whole concept of don't be throwing money at a game where you have no guaranteed stay. So I learned that lesson the hard way and I've been more cautious with my money since then. But and so I had this class with the minigun and a bunch of other random things like the boomerang and um, and the 10,000 health and armor points. And I also got permission from Conwell to do this wonderful thing called the Joker Terror, where I would go around and for five minutes I could kill anyone on the server. I made this gun later on in the server which I believe the uh, specifications on that gun were uh, it fired 10,000 bullets a minute, stored 100,000, and fired and had an instant reload on it. So it was kind of like a, it, it was kind of very, 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 very big gun. It was uh, the M4A1 Iron modified to those specifications, and I called it the Hand of God. <laughs> I know that's a little uh, sacrilegious to name a gun like that, but at the time, it sounded like the best name for a weapon that deadly. <laughs> so I named it the Hand of God. Now, a lot of people hated the Hand of God because it was so overpowered, and I would PD raid with my class with 10,000 health and 10,000 armor and my gun and I would straight up hold the PD for hours on end because there was no limit as to how long you could take over the PD. You could raid the PD and after 15 minutes you could either take over or end the raid. So I took over the PD for a whole day until I got off the next day so I could get ready for work and go work. And then the next day I'd get on and repeat the same thing. And so when I gave Mr. Smoke a copy of the gun and a copy of my class, like I had previously mentioned, I gave him access to my class, so I also gave him access to the gun, and we got, to, we bought nerve gas and nerve gas masks so that we couldn't get affected by the nerve gas. So we nerve gassed the PD, smoke bombed the PD, we rushed in, and keep in mind, YouTube, I'm talking about a game here. This is nothing to do with real life. Please, please, please don't hate me. Okay, sorry, just a little disclaimer there. So that YouTube doesn't hate me because I know the YouTube machine and it will hate you if you don't use disclaimers. I learned that from every Reddit YouTuber ever. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so we just hold the PD all day. All day. And it, it was really funny. 
Now, Mr. Smoke was kind of slightly manipulative in a sense of uh, he would say one thing and then go off and do a completely other thing. Like, uh, we eventually started our own server known as the SDFU Servers Network. And yes, in reality, even though I said it stood for Storm Tech Financial Utilities, it really was a mass front for shut the fuck up servers. It, it, it really was. That's literally what it stood for. It became a meme. Originally, it stood for Storm Tech Financial Utilities, but it can't be. It became a meme because we because members were like, "Oh, it's shut the fuck up servers," and our name became so widespread once we accepted that as a meme and as the thing that the official server's name was. And it became so widespread and there were so many people that we had a partnered server inside of the network that was ran by somebody else. And combined with our server and theirs, we had like almost 300 people lined up and just boom. <laughs> like 150, 200, 300 I think. Roundabouts. And we had partnered with several other servers and absorbed several other servers before partnering with this server and adding them to our network. Now this server was known as Titan RP. Titan RP was owned by Radical. Now Radical and Mr. Smoke got along just fine starting out. But then, in typical nice guy fashion, Mr. Smoke decided to start hitting on and trying to slide into the DMs of Radical. Which, by the way, if you are ever trying to, ref to run a professional server network, and you are the owner of that network, or one of the owners of that network, don't ever slide into the DMs for personal reasons of anyone partnered with your network. That is unprofessional, it is risky, it is stupid, don't do it. Now, he slid into our DMs, and so about midday on, I think it was a Wednesday or a Tuesday, I get a DM from Radical that says, Hey, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> and I said, what? And she's like, hey, he's like, uh, He's like, he's like hitting on me, he's sliding into my DMs, he's trying to like get into my pants or whatever. I'm just like, okay. So I handled the situation as best I could and da -da -da -da, I kicked Smoke out of the network completely. I blacklisted him from my servers and everything and I told Radical, I said, you know, you should probably blacklist him from yours, but I don't personally care what you do either way because that's not my problem. I've resolved the issue on my end. What you choose to do on your server is your business. I'm just here as the face of the network. So, I, she blacklisted him for a while and then he came back and they were okay. And then he started getting really, really, really manipulative with the player base and players started disappearing. And I went and talked to, after getting several reports from other players, I went and talked to a few other people about a network that was undermining our player base and stealing our player base flat out from under us. And it was like Synergy servers or whatever, and I was like, what the hell is this? Whoa. And I looked into Synergy servers, and guess who was on the board of directors for that specific network? You guessed it, Mr. Smoke. So, I got really mad. And I slid into his DMs and I told him off and I, I flat out play, placed a network policy that says, don't go on this, net, this other network. They're not affiliated with this network. And if you go on this network, you're basically insulting us to our face because they're insulting the network that you're also playing on while you're playing on their network and they're being... It, it was weird and just... It was a weird situation. So, that's not where Mr. Smoke in this manipulative and nice guy ways ends, no. After a while, after the whole Titan RP incident, it was several months after the Titan RP incident, 
I got back into a friendship with Mr. Smoke. We kind of rekindled our friendship a little bit, and I had decided, okay, well, I'll give this another shot. So we opened up SDF2 servers again. <sighs> and it got pretty popular. It made some money. It was the first time I'd ever made money off, of a, net off a network of servers. Actually, it wasn't a network this time, it was just one server instead of a whole network of servers. And we made, like, I made, I want to say, around a hundred dollars or so from that. And it was, it was pretty sweet. And of course, all of the funding went directly back into running the server and paying for the add-ons and whatnot. None of it went into my pocket at all. Literally none of it went into either of our pockets. We had barely enough to cover all of the hosting costs and the add-ons and even some of my personal funding came out of my pocket for helping the server. So that was fun. It was fun to make money off of that while I lasted. And of course, we expanded into several other servers like a dark RP server. And Mr. Smoke met this girl. We'll call this girl HQ for Harley Quinn since he was the Joker of sorts. So we'll we'll call her the alias of Harley Quinn. Because that was her username when I first met her on Discord when he brought her into the community Discord that we had at the time for the server. So he brought her into the Discord and then he brought her on the server. So HQ and I started talking when Mr. Smoke went on vacation. Mr. Smoke went on vacation for a week. HQ and I started talking and HQ and I got really close as friends and I got to hear everything when they started dating. Everything that went wrong with that relationship I heard about. Which was a little annoying to say the least but you know I was a good friend I was just like alright fine I'll listen to the, to the problems here and I'll try to help and provide uh, good advice because apparently for some reason all of my friends decide that I'm good with, with relationships and they should come to me for advice I've had literally almost any of my friends that have been in relationships come to me for advice over the years and I just don't understand it but you know what I'll live with it because apparently it's a thing that people ass assert my uh, er people assume with my maturity and professionalism that I run things with now that apparently I have the maturity and professionalism to be able to handle a relationship advice giving session like I'm some sort of relationship counseling therapist or something but anyway enough on that tangent let's get back on the story <laughs> I don't want to make this video longer than I have to but you know I will if I, if I decide to go on tangents, because it's it's interesting, I hope. <laughs> I guess we'll see. But anyways, so like I said, I heard every little problem that they had. And so, they broke up a couple times, and when they broke up this last time, HQ and I stayed friends, and I still let her be in the community and whatever, and in the Discord. And, of course, Mr. Smoke and I had a falling out over some other thing at the time that I don't even remember what happened fully, but we had a falling out and I just, I kicked him out of the community yet again for the last time that time. At least I think it was, yeah, it was the last time that time I kicked him out of my personal Discord as well as the Discord I was running at the time. So the personal Discord I was running at the time was known as the Squad Room. You're, you may remember that from a previous story time. Yeah, the squad room ties back into something for once. <laughs> a lot of my stories from my past that I'm going to be telling will tie into somewhere into either the squad room, Tiny Service United, or one of my other, my other Gary's Mod communities that I ran. Because I've had a lot of server running experience that has been filled with drama and absolute crap. So... Anyways, <laughs> so I kicked him out of my personal Discord and I kicked him out of the community and I let HQ stay and 
HQ and I got into a relationship, sort of. HQ and I sort of got into a relationship, I, I, I guess. It was kind of an online relationship, so I don't really count it. Uh, and I kept running Gary's Mod servers through that relationship. I ran a Dark RP server, and then I closed that down, and several months later, I ran a Star Wars server that was pretty successful, and I ran that one on my own. That one I ran on my own with a few of my friends helping with admin stuff and moderation stuff under the SQFQ flag again. The SQFQ server's flag didn't die until about a year after that. <laughs> so yeah, SQFQ servers was one of my longest running communities that I ever had. So I'm surprised it managed to stay afloat and the name managed to stay as meaningful to a lot of people, I still have people to this day, I slide into their DM sometimes and I'm like, hey, you remember this community and you remember me? And they're like, yeah, I remember that, that was really cool, I love that community. And I was like, hey, well guess what, I have this other personal Discord, I have this other Discord that I'm running that has absolutely nothing to do with Gary's Mod. You should come join it and talk with other people from the previous communities. And they're like, cool, and they join, and yeah. Anyway, so... That's about the end of the whole Mr. Smoke scenario is uh, I ended the friendship with him after the final straw in the drama of communities and I was just like, okay, he's been a toxic influence to this point and he hasn't changed in the three chances I've given him up to this point. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop him like a hot cake at this point. So I let him go. And I haven't talked to him since. He's tried to come back into my communities other, by other means, by sliding in through alternate Discord accounts, by using one of my invite links on my channel videos. So, for now, he's stayed away. But I have a feeling, after releasing this video and putting his name in the title, he will try to slide into my community again. I'll keep you posted in the next story time video I make about whether or not he actually manages to slide into my discord yet again but anyway guys I, my name is johnny Ayers and i hope you enjoyed today's story if you, if you did enjoy today's story go ahead and leave a like down below uh leave a comment down below with your favorite part of today's story if you've had a similar situation happen or any kind of feedback you have for the video if you've liked something if you didn't like something um and as always share the video and if you're new here go ahead and subscribe i try to help those videos almost every day it kind of so so here and there because you know uploading every day is not a reliable promise because absolutely no one except for the big time youtubers have enough time to make youtube their full-time thing that they do all the time so anyways like i said my name is johnny aries and i'll see y'all in the next video Bye bye